Okay guys, so today we're going to be talking about SIRDS for this video. Uh, SIRDS is covered in chapter 2 from about chapter 2b onwards. Really we're going to be looking at some of the stuff that is used uh, when we're doing Pythagorean uh, triangles and that, working at different sides. A lot of the time you're going to end up with a square root of some number and we're going to have a look at how to manipulate that. Okay? Definition of a SIRD. Uh, Persian mathematician whose name was Al Khwarizmi. Uh, it's where we get algorithm word from. He was a pretty smart guy back in the, in 800 AD. Uh, he called these things irrational numbers, which is a number like the number pi that can't be represented as one number over another in a fraction. And he called them inaudible numbers. Okay. And the Latin translation for that is certus, which means mute, can't be voiced, inaudible, okay? Now, a couple of key ideas that I want us to get on top of before we move into the actual third stuff itself. Uh, that is that this sign here, uh, square root function, or we'll call it, we can call it the radical function as well, okay? Uh, the radical function is the inverse or the opposite of squaring a number, okay? So recall when we were doing our Pythagorean things that if we had uh, c squared equals something, to get rid of that c squared, you take the square root of both sides, gets rid of the squared, and all you're left with was c, okay? Now, these key ideas are some of our algebraic techniques that we use when we're simplifying thirds, okay? So we're moving into chapter 2b now. If you want to follow through with your textbook, you can. So this first one here, what this is simply saying is that the square root of x, if we square that, we're just going to be left with x, okay? Uh, all that is saying is that square root and squaring something are the opposite. All you're left with is what was inside. Okay, we've got an example here that if we take the square root of 16, that's 4, right? And if we square 4, we end up with 16. So we see what was in there anyway coming out in the end. Uh, similarly, if we have the square root of x squared, having the square root on the outside gets rid of this squared nature in here. And that's what we use algebraically when we're trying to separate the squaredness from a number, okay? Uh, and we've got an example here that's similar to that one, the square root of 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, and if we take the square root of that, we're going to end up with 4, okay? Now, this third one, uh, just like in regular algebra, if we've just got two things multiplied against each other, we literally can just smash them together, okay? So they're both square root of x times the square root of y. We can just put the x, y together and then put the square root over both of them, okay? So the x, y is combined together and you take the square root of both. Uh, we've got an example here, square root of 3 times the square root of 4. So that's the square root of 3 times 4 and you're going to end up with 12. 3 times 4 is 12, so it's the square root of 12, okay? Now, uh, we can do the similar thing with division as well. So if I had the square root of x divided by the square root of y, then in algebra, instead of using this uh, symbol here, we just write it as x over y, okay? And because they're both square roots, we can just take the square root of the whole thing, all right? So if we see this happening with numbers as well, square root of 6 divided by the square root of 2, okay? So we combine the 6 and 2 as 6 over 2, take the square root of both. Now 6 over 2 is 3, and we have the square root of 3. Okay, so that's a simplified form of this longer thing here, all right? I'm sure you can agree that this looks a lot neater than that, okay? So remember when we're doing this stuff that there's two things that mathematicians like, and that's to be lazy and for things to be nice and neat. Right, here's something cool. I reckon it's really excellent that we can take things in and out of square roots, okay? Uh, it's really going to help you when you're trying to simplify things, especially when we get on to looking at functions. Uh, there'll be some square roots cropping up and it'll be really handy to understand this part, okay? Right. So recall the fact that we just looked at that square root of x times square root of y is square root of xy, alright? This is the same thing as saying 
that xy is equal to square root of x times square root of y. Okay, it's just the same thing flipped around. Right, let's think about when we take the square root of a number. All right, most times you're thinking about square roots in the past is you've been taking square roots of pretty easy numbers, okay? And they're called perfect squares, right? Which are squares of whole numbers. So if I go 2 squared, that's 4. If I have 4 squared, that's 16, okay? So 4 and 16 are perfect squares because they are the square of a whole number, all right? Most numbers, if you take the square root of them, actually come up with this big long number that's just gross, okay? So many of them are irrational numbers that it's not funny, and so it's much, much, much easier to talk about them as the square root of that number. However, square root of 8 doesn't mean a lot. So, what we want to do sometimes is, fact is um, simplify it so we get a smaller number inside the square root sign. So, the first thing we would do is that we factorise inside the radical sign. All right? So, we've got the square root of 28 here. One of the set of factors of 28 is 4 times 7. 4 times 7 is 28. Could have been 2 times 14 or 1 times 28. But I'm going to choose 4 times 7 for a particular reason. 4 is a perfect square. So I know this is going to work really easily. When you do these factorizations, you want to try and find a perfect square. Okay, so you just need to remember them really. Uh, you've got 4, 16, uh, 25, 9, all those kinds of numbers. Okay? Right, 4 times 7. We can break this up like we did up here into square root of 4 times the square root of 7. As square root of 4, we can work that out. We know that it is 2. So we have 2 times the square root of 7. In algebra, we like to get rid of our multiplication signs if we can. And so we just got 2 root 7. This is the simplified version. Why? Because it has a smaller number now inside the root function. Uh, rather than 28, we now have 7. So 2 root 7 is a little bit easier to understand what's going on than 28 square root of 28, right? Uh, we can approximate this a little better. We might look at that later on down the track. But this is a skill that you need to be able to do. Right. Also, we can reverse the process. We can put numbers back into radical functions if we need to. It's not going to be a whole lot of times we need to, but this is still a good process to be able to do. Uh, it's just another algebraic technique that you can put in your... Uh, toolbox ready to be able to use whenever you need it, okay? So, consider this, a already simplified version, 4 times the square root of 3, okay? So, I'm just putting the multiplication sign in there, so you're seeing it as the opposite of that example that we just looked at. Um, now, this step here is a little bit confusing, but remember that x is the same thing as the square root of x squared. We looked at that earlier. Okay, remember on the first or second slide, we saw that the square root and the squaring cancel each other out. So in algebra, sometimes we can do some pretty funky things by putting those things back in. Okay, we haven't changed this 4 at all by putting the square root and the squared, but we're about to use it and you'll see how. So I take, put, take the square root of 4 and square 4, and so we have square root of 4 squared times square root of 3. I work out my 4 squared, so I've got square root of 16 times square root of 3, alright? That's coming from this little rule that we had earlier, that the square root of x times the square root of y is the square root of xy. So we do that, combine them both underneath the radical function, 16 times 3. And therefore, in the end, we multiply 16 by 3, so we have 4 times square root of 3 is equal to the square root of 48. Now, you might be asking, when are we going to use this? Like, what was the point? The point is, doing algebra is all about having as many techniques as you can to be able to solve problems, okay? Uh, to be able to look at situations, figure out a mathematical way of getting through it, and the more tools you have, the more confident you're going to be in attempting those solutions. Right. Now, this is sort of the next thing, still on thirds, but just... We're not multiplying and dividing anymore. We're going to be looking at adding and subtracting thirds. Okay, this is getting into chapter 2c. Uh, and one of those things might say simplify this one. 6 times the square root of 3 
plus 2 times the square root of 3. All right? Now, remembering uh, last term, we had a look at the idea of uh, like terms and unlike terms. If we had like terms, so 2x plus 3x, because they're both x's, we can add them together and get 5x. Okay? In the same way here, because we have two, both of them, both terms have root 3, they are like thirds now. So we can add 6 and 2, and we have 8 of them now. Okay? 6 of something plus 2 of something is 8 of those things. Okay? So our key idea for this is that if an expression, which is one of these things, has like thirds, so the thirds are the same one, uh, we can simply add or subtract them, similar to the same thing we can do with like terms. All right? For example... 7 root 2 minus 3 root 2 plus 7 root 3, okay? If we have a look down, let's find our like thirds. Root 2, root 2, they're both like thirds. Ah, what have we got here? Root 3, it is not a like third, so we don't touch it, okay? It's apples and oranges, can't combine them, all right? But here, 7 of the root 2 minus 3 of the root 2 is going to end up with 4. 7 minus 3 is 4 root 2s plus 7 root 3. Didn't touch 7 root 3. Why? Because it is not a like third. Okay. Lastly, if we have unlike thirds, we can do something with them sometimes. Okay? Just say we had the uh, question to simplify 3 times the square root of 32 plus 5 times the square root of 2 minus the square root of 20. Now, don't freak out. These are just numbers. They're just numbers like the other ones are numbers. They're just numbers like we can have X or Y. It doesn't matter. In maths, it doesn't matter how big the number it is. It is still a number, and we can have a shot just the same as we did with anything else. So, first step, simplify the terms. Okay, so earlier, we looked at simplifying our thirds by factorizing them, trying to bring things out from inside the square root function so we have a smaller number inside there. Okay? Now I've chosen these numbers so they work pretty well and most questions you get like this, they will work fairly easily and it should be uh, easily seeable which way you're supposed to progress with it. Okay? So 32, I can break that up into its factors of 16 times 2. Now I've been pretty special at choosing that because 16 is a perfect square that we looked at before. It, uh, it's a square of a whole number being 4 that we'll see later on. 5 times the square root of 2. Can't do anything with 2. It's a prime number. We can't factorise it any further. Uh, and 20, unfortunately, the only perfect square that I can find in there is the 4. So 4 times 5 are the factors I'm going to break that up into, okay? Right. 3 times 16 times, so 3 times root 16 times square root of 2. We saw that before, we can break up these um, square root functions. Plus 5 times square root of 2, just putting the multiply in there. Uh, minus root 4 times root 5. Same thing, just breaking it apart. I can work this out. Square root of 16, we know that that's 4. So I have 3 times 4 times the square root of 2. I also have here 5 times root 2, so I haven't touched it. 2 times root 5. I've worked out the root square root of 4. It is 2. Okay? Now, 3 times 4 is 12. So I have 12 root 2 now. Plus 5 root 2 minus 2 root 5. Okay? So I haven't been able to do anything with this one here. But what have we got here? We've got like thirds. We can now actually do something with them. We can do this addition operation. Okay? So 12 plus 5 is 17 of those root 2s now. And I couldn't combine this one because it is an unlike third, so it stays as minus 2 root 5. And we're done. So in really 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps, okay, uh, this is probably about as hard as you can get asked for these simplifying unlike third stuff. Uh, really, I haven't had to use a lot of this throughout my time, but it's again, it's part of the toolbox that you're trying to grab as part of your confidence with algebra, okay? So don't forget to watch this video again or pause a couple of sections and have a look at the slides if you need to go over things a little bit more and make sure you write in the blog if there's some particular things you don't understand, okay? Have a good day.